It is 8 p.m. in Douala, Cameroon. Good evening and thanks for joining us. You're watching the English prime time on Spectrum Television. On to the top stories of the night. The third contingent of Cameroonian MINUSCA forces to maintain peace in the Central African Republic will from now henceforth be paid accordingly and disciplined maintained. This is the outcome of a, of a contract which they signed today in Douala in the presence of a minister delegate in charge of defense Jose Betty Asomo. The minister has said that the 750 soldiers that will uh, defend the country's colors in the Central African Republic have been re remunerated in a bid to avoid the upheavals in September last year. The remains of music legend Anne Marinze has been removed today in Yaoundé in the presence of uh, hundreds of artists and top government officials. She will be ferried to her native Lolodov in the south region for burial. Over the weekend, we shall be giving you the atmosphere at the Yaoundé Central Hospital mortuary where the corpse was removed. Those are the top stories. Good evening once again and thanks for joining us. Cameroonian MINUSCA soldiers will be will be put under contracts and end a monthly allowance of 450,000 francs CFA. The peacekeepers who will be uh, going to the Central African Republic next month have started signing their contracts today in Douala under the watchful eyes of the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense. Veronica Adjo reports that the move is aimed at avoiding the upheavals of September 2015, where 200 soldiers soldiers demonstrated against unpaid bonuses. Her report. September 2015 demonstration of Minuscar African Republic have gone without adequate finance. In reaction to the AU's demand, Cameroon's government has decided to award a contract to each soldier. The contract signed today clearly elaborates the task of each gendarme and each one's rights. Also, a 200,000 CFA increase has been granted to all, making a monthly salary of 450,000 CFA and an 80% relative value. Cameroon's Minister of Defense, who made it clear to the men and women at the civil engineer camp here in Douala today, equally said in about 15 days from now, each soldier shall have a bank account created just for the wage. All these clarifications emerge as some 750 trained soldiers prepared to join other peacekeepers in the Central African Republic come August. A disciplinary team shall be put in place to tackle administrative issues, disputes among comrades, to avoid any moves that would jeopardize the image of Cameroon. Nevertheless, any soldier who fails to obey rules and regulations shall be sent back to Cameroon, his rights shunned, and will face judgment upon military proceedings. In a related development, the second military squadron of the National Gendarmerie in Douala have been schooled on how to curb demonstrations in urban centers. The men and women who received the training at the Gendarmerie post in Bopier in Douala have been presented to the, to the members of the press. We have developments still with Veronica Aji. <laughs> An interesting demonstration of gendarmes and bike riders in case of any violent protest. <laughs> After months of training, these gendarme officials are ready for the challenges ahead. An observation confirmed by the commander of the Littoral Gendarmerie Legion. If you have a violent manifestation with any kind of uh, people, any kind of manifest, uh, uh, manifesting here in Douala, I think that, as we have seen, the group, group Escadron number two is ready to reduce the manifestation pacifically, or if they, they, we, have to, we have to use force, we are going to use force, and I think then things are going to go well. All is ready for that. Guns, 
helmets and other weapons of defense were all portrayed by the second squadron to the knowledge of the public at the Bopi camp here in Douala. Gendarmes have conducted the exercise with professionalism and uh, I think that you have, you have enjoyed the, the smoke coming from the lacrimogen who have been uh, used for the exercise. I'm sure that if you are in front of a pacifist manifestation, manifestation, the gendarme will be at the level because you are promoting the con context of uh, gendarme or uh, proximity. That is this exercise, dubbed Operation Benskin, is in prelude to a warning by bikers in the Douala II municipality over the death of one of theirs at the Lacantony Hospital. Angry bikers who denounced the rough manner of approach from municipal agents on duty have promised to stage a violent protest in front of the Douala II Council to make their voices heard. Je suis confiant, je suis confiant que, to the president uh, of Bike Riders Association, dialogue is the best means to trash out differences among people. While hoping bike riders present at the staged protest carry on the message to their colleagues, the uniformed men and women with smiles on their faces stand firm in ensuring peace in their city. Officials of the National Election Observatory of the Central African Republic say that Cameroon's electoral system will be very efficient when they return home in the Central African Republic. They were making the satisfactory remark at the end of a working session with Elecam officials in Yaoundé. Laruneta Paji. Cameroon's Minister of Communication has ridiculed Amnesty International's 2016 report accusing the country of violating human rights through acts it qualifies as arbitrary arrest, false disappearances, and harsh interrogations. Under normal circumstances, we would have expected to be hailed by this organization. If we go by Amnesty International report, the Cameroonian government sold crime would have been that of defending the integrity of its territory and of protecting the person and good on its soil. Unfortunately for Amnesty International, neither the Cameroonian people nor the international community could join it in this move. The government stands firm that in the fight against the terrorist group, the Cameroonian army conforms to international and national laws. And when, nevertheless, any misbehaviors are recorded, they are punished in all objectivities and without any complacency when evidence. At the legal level, Cameroon has passed a law to suppress terrorist acts, which is a framework to judge such act in an appropriate setting and in compliance with Cameroon international commitment. The government spokesman challenges Amnesty International's report by stating that Cameroon is hosting over 350,000 refugees because they believe their lives are guaranteed in the territory. Now, let's take this information in brief. Cameroon's 10 regional governors have uh, come to the end of their first semester conference in Yaoundé. The senior civil administrators have been told to strengthen uh, the supervision of projects under the three-year emergency plan. They will also receive instructions on security, the state of law, and how to deal with uh, current societal issues like the bird flu epidemic. The Seat Plenary Assembly of Post and Telecommunication Commission of the Central of Central Africa, COPTAC, has held today in Yaoundé with member states urged to achieve common goals in the post and telecom sector in the sub regions. We have developments with Ivonako. The post and telecommunication experts believe member countries of the Conference of Post and Telecommunications of Central Africa, COPTAC, are facing similar challenges. There are many challenges. Infrastructure, we need to develop the infrastructure. Do you have the cars, the vehicles, the motorcycles? Do you have the internet? Do you have the offices? Do you have the, the many, many things, the, the train people to do, to do the job?
En Centrafrique, euh, ont connu quelques perturbations. In the case of the Central African Republic, their challenges go far beyond infrastructure and connectivity. Political instability in the country has forced post and telecommunication services to operate mainly within the capital city and at the international level. The experts say the sixth plenary assembly of COPTAC presents them with the opportunity to deliberate on the factors hindering the growth of postal services in Central Africa and to seek solutions to these setbacks at the regional and international levels. We don't provide electricity, for example, we don't provide internet lines, we don't provide all these things at, uh, at a global level. We, that is the responsibility of the member countries to undertake those things. We can only advise them on the quality, or the type, the range of services and the, and the type of services they can uh, um, uh, implement. The Minister of Post and Telecommunications, Mined Libom Lili Keng, has urged member countries to work together to ensure regional integration and to focus on realizing projects in the postal sector, such as ameliorating the quality of service delivery, facilitating financial transactions through postal services, and putting in place infrastructures that will interconnect the member countries. Let's now come back to the reports of Larinette Apaji on the end of the working visit of officials of the National Election Authority of the Central African Republic who have praised uh, Cameroon's electoral system. They uh, say that they will use the experience gathered with Elecam officials to boost their electoral system when they get back home to the Central African Republic. Let's gather from Larinette Apaji. Some electoral stakeholders in Cameroon, particularly opposition political parties and civil society organizations, have criticized the country's electoral process, yet officials of the National Authority of Elections in the Central African Republic have been in Cameroon from the 18th to the 21st of July to learn from ELECAM's experience in managing the electoral process. The justification provided by the spokesperson of the delegation is that their objective has been to select good practices and leave behind what is not admirable. Nous avons conduit, uh... We have been handling a very difficult electoral process. We have presented the difficulties to ELECAM and we have been told how to manage them. After being tutored on the functions of elections Cameroon, ELECAM's communication approach of proximity is one amongst the good practices officials of the National Authority of Elections intend to implement in the Central African Republic. Managing the electoral list, biometric voters registration, the transmission and treatment of information gotten, the electoral card, managing other difficulties that can arise like duplication, we have really learned much. The Central African election officials are also looking forward to improving their electoral process to better install a Senate which has been constituted recently. Let's now talk economy. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has been boosting cocoa farmers in the southwest region in a bid to enhance their production. These farmers have benefited from spraying machines and chemicals in order for them to uh, have high yields at the end. Of in big Ekombe village and has really enhanced production. We have seen that this uh, mass spray has gone a long way to facilitate farmers' problem. We spray a hectare of farm in less than no second. One person can even spray a hectare of farm in a day, whereas in the past, even four people will not finish a hectare of farm during spray per day. Of the cocoa season, Philemon Bale. Local farmers in the Borges subdivision, the southwest region of Cameroon, have appreciated government's effort of providing spraying machines to use in Big Ekombe village and has really enhanced production. We have seen that this uh, mass spray has gone a long way to facilitate farmers' problem. Of the cocoa season, Philemon Bale. Local farmers in the Borges subdivision, the southwest region of Cameroon, have appreciated government's effort of providing spraying machines to use in Big Ekombe village and has really enhanced production. We have seen that this uh, mass spray has gone a long way to facilitate farmers' problem. Of the cocoa season, Philemon Bale. 
Local farmers in the Bogue subdivision, the southwest region of Cameroon, have appreciated government's effort of providing spraying machine introduced in Big Ekombe village and has really enhanced production. We have seen that this uh, mass spray has gone a long way to facilitate farmers' problem. They spray a hectare of farm in less than no second. One person can even spray a hectare of farm in a day, whereas in the past, even four people will not finish a hectare of farm during spray per day. The government, through the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, finds this method sustainable as it simply accompanies the farmers in their activities. It's a partnership, a partnership venture. We do it in partnership with the, with, the, with, the, with the farmers. The farmers start, then the project comes and give it as a support, as in the name of the project. It's a support project, so I expect the farmer to have already go, 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 been going on with his own, his own activities and will come in and support themselves or can reach right to the expected uh, the production. <laughs> How, what the project does, we carry out things. So the farmer will train the village, we will have to carry out this mass treatment and this mass treatment. Then we come in with the support in terms of uh, chemicals and equipment. As I said, we came in March with the insecticides to spray against, uh, against capsid. And now we're linking it up now with the, the treatment against uh, uh, black pot disease. Uh, as at now, we have given out 280,000 sachets of chemicals to farmers in the various production basins in the, in the region. Let's now uh, talk our holiday uh, page. Um, students of the Baminda 2 municipality have been challenged to exercise responsible behavior and exhibit patriotism as they look forward to working with the council. Uh, the mayor of that municipality was speaking as he welcomed the students for the special holiday campaign. These students, we are told, are 200 in number. Premier Shetu reports and shun them from acts of irresponsibility. As part of his drive towards reuniting all the sections of his municipality, the mayor for Bamenda II, Balik Awa Fidelis, uses an inclusive approach in recruiting these students, regardless of their schools. The job descriptions vary in groups, and challenges are encountered, as this supervisor explains. They are charged with the filling of potholes because most of the roads in the subdivision are cast, which are the head roads that are pretty bad due to the heavy downpour, open up the gutters and they clean the streets and the planting of trees. We have some difficulties because some of the students are not here because of other reasons health-wise and some are still to come because uh, the list was published without them actually getting the, getting the full information on, the, on how it was published. The budgetary head for the council this year stands at 8 million for holiday jobs and training of youths for a period of five weeks these youths are expected to go home with a sum between 20 to 30,000 francs. Some students advance reasons for taking up the job and table appeals. I just joined this council work to help to clean our environment, to improve on our sanitation. This work is very tedious and we like wish if they could increase our pay because it's not really easy. The working conditions are not really favorable. There are some times that we need to work and exit under the going just to make it better. So we we'll just plead if they can increase our salary, our pay, to, as they increase it, you motivate us, you, it will act as an incentive. I decided to look part of my school fees to help my parents. As of now, the actual pay package hasn't been decided upon since it is done each year, depending on the intake. We pray it meets the aspirations of these young Cameroonians. A historian says that the country must diversify its strategies to combat terrorism. He made the proclamations or the appeal rather in his book that has been published recently. Veronica Aji reports. The book titled International Terrorism, Yesterday to Tomorrow, focused on the geographical, historical and even sociological face of terrorism. The author, Simon Yefu, historian, took particular interest on the impact of terrorism in the socio-economic and cultural sphere of life. L'auteur propose d'aborder la question dans une perspective globale. Bringing the topic back to Cameroon, Boko Haram could be weakened if all is put in place to discourage Cameroon youths from joining the Islamist sect, an opinion shared by many who took part in the book launch. 
Government authorities should diversify their tactics by reinforcing the living standards of Cameroonians and valorizing their citizens. The 300-page book launched here in Douala in the presence of journalists and other elites gives an in-depth analysis on how Cameroon tackles the Boko Haram phenomenon, clearly stating the fight should not be left to the military alone. The mortal remains of a Cameroon musical legend Anne Marinze has been removed today from the Yaoundé Central Hospital mortuary with a musical career spanning 50 years. Her corpse removal attracted crowds of people, amongst them musical artists as well as top politicians. She will be buried in her native Lolodov, that's in the south region, this weekend. But uh, just before that, our newsroom has decided to look into the profile of the legendary Car Cameroonian, who many say is the queen of music. Our our reporter on that beat is Darling Fujo. Born in the Cameroonian town of Lolodov in the South region in 1932, Anne Marie the golden voice of the Cameroon music, began her musical career in a church choir at the age of eight. The renowned musician who made her last public appearance during the 50th anniversary of Cameroon's reunification in Boya stood courageously for Cameroon's independence from French colonial masters and advocated for respect of human rights and dignities with her hit single Liberty in 1934. Hey, 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 hey. This cry for liberty was used at political rallies and by political opponents in the 80s. Daughter of a local guitarist and sister of Cromwell Zier, who introduced her to Hawaii music, Anne Marie Zier recorded her very first success with Malundi in 1955. This track opened the way to the virtual musician to perform across the African continent. The release of her third album, Ibiza Bazoo, in 1996, confirmed her position as a queen mother of Bikutsi. Anne Marizi, together with the famous Cameroonian saxophonist Manu Dibango, are the only Cameroonians to have received the distinction of the Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur by the French government in 2001. The 84-year-old who impressed fans around the world with her beautiful and attractive voice lives behind a 67-year career and a rich repertoire of music in Betty and French language. <laughs> Let's now take you out of the country where momentum is shifting against the Islamic State in Iraq as discussions are taking place about the need to erase the terrorist groups from its final stronghold. Now, U.S. Secretary of State John, US, US Secretary of State John Kerry has uh, hosted a counter-IS meeting uh, just one day after security officials from 30 countries are gathered to seek ways of ending the terrorist threat. We have developments with the VOE. Islamic State fighters are feeling the squeeze as Iraqi forces tighten their circle around Mosul, the largest Iraqi city under the group's control. There is nobody at this table who would argue that the momentum hasn't shifted. It has shifted. And Daesh has been driven out of almost half the territory that once occupied in Iraq. Defense ministers in the counter-Islamic State campaign met with the commander of U.S. forces in the Middle East to work out contributions needed for success in the fight for the terror group's de facto capital, Raqqa, and, of course, the massive battle for Mosul. We shouldn't underestimate the amount of preparation uh, necessary to take on an, an operation like that. It's a, it's a big city, two million people, large uh, geographic area, so we want to make sure we're well prepared. Defeating Islamic State requires more than just retaking cities. Those who have fled IS rule need a safe place to return to. Most of our conversation today was as General Motel indicated about, about what happens after the defeat of ISIL in Mosul. Stabilization plans, reconstruction plans, 
uh, and so forth. As IS loses more territory in Iraq and Syria, the fight will not end with the collapse of the so-called caliphate. We can contain it, we can limit it, we can defeat parts of it in detail, but none of it's going to go away. Experts say hundreds of militants are expected to disperse and attacks across the globe are likely to continue. Carla Babb, VOA News, the Pentagon. Let's now talk sports football. European clubs are bracing up for the new football season that kicks off uh, late next month. And now that uh, season has been described as one of the highly anticipated following the record transfer of Paul Pogba from Italian side Juventus to Manchester United. Now, Cameroonian uh, football stars are also in the transhumans as many will be changing their shirts for next clubs next season. Our reporter, Wana Henry, has been following uh, some transfers and our reports. <laughs> Cameroonian professional footballers playing via trade in Europe have for weeks now been crisscrossing different clubs in Europe in prelude to the start of the next football seasons. The suspense is on whether or not 32-year-old Benoit Asue Koto will have to leave French Division 1 club site Saint Etienne, since his contract was for just a season, or officials of the club might decide to extend his stay since nothing has been said this far. Achille Emana, after playing in France, Spain, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, now moves over to Tokushima Votis, a Division II club site in Japan. The 34 year old lastly met his cap with the indomitable Lions at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. 22-year-old Clinton Jemoa, after several months of injury during last season, he was unable to deliver the much-expected result needed at Tottenham Football Club. He now moves over to Olympique Marcel on a season-long term loan to replace France under 21 winger Georges Kevin Kudo for £11 million. Francom, after a brilliant performance with a Toy du Sahel in Tunisia, crosses over to Germany to join Division II club site Karusha in the German Bundesliga. What does it for this edition of the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television? I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. I'll be with you same time tomorrow for another dose of information. From the team and myself here in Douala, we say good night. Goodbye from Douala.